Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to BMMP4553 Sheet Metal Technology this will be our 8th lecture session and I'll be talking about deep drawing today so what is deep drawing? it is a process of a punch that forces a flat sheet metal into a deep die cavity and the round sheet metal block is placed over a circular die opening and held in place with a plank holder and the punch forces it down into the die cavity so this uh, shows uh, a diagram that uh, the how the mechanism of deep drawing okay we have a punch okay at the before position with the blank this is the shape of the blank and we have a pressure plate that works together with the blank holder and the punch and the blank holder will hold the blank in place and then this is, will be the die that is forcing the shape of the blank and flow down below will be the lowest part will be the spring stripper ring that will hold the shape in place so once the punch goes through the, die, uh, the blank Okay, we, uh, the blank holder with the pressure will hold it in place and it for, the punch will force the blank into the die taking its shape where the spring the, uh, stripper ring here will hold the final shape okay so this is the before shape of the blank and the second part will be the, the drawn shape okay and the next uh, diagram shows the terminology of the deep drawing process with the F representing the force of the punch the D0 is the maximum diameter of the blank DP is the diameter of the punch T represents the thickness RP is the radial in the outer radius of the punch and C is the clearance between the blank holder and the punch itself so the steps of the punching itself, uh, the deep drawing process itself is once the blank holder and the punch uh, approaches the blank the force of the blank holder will be in place to hold the blank at its position and then the punch will proceed to uh, once to proceed to approach the blank and once it touches the blank and forces the blank into the die the sheet of the pen is being forced over the corner of the punch and the die then it's, as it continues further downwards you have the area between the punch and the uh, die show here this area will undergo a process of straightening okay and the flange that is in this area will move inwards okay and the force in the black holder is still remains while the punch will uh, move further downwards next as the punch goes further inwards and so you have the a compression in the area of the circumferential direction which is that the outer parameter which is this uh, area will become smaller and in the radial direction okay the radial which is going outwards will be tension and there is some compression uh, some compression uh, that is in the thickness direction which is in here In this area it is somewhat uh, significantly large because as this as the thickness moves in the flange area this 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 area uh, the flange will be more will be thickened up okay. and that's why the clearance between the punch and the die okay this clearance area okay which is the clearance area it must be higher than the sheet thickness by about 10% which is larger than the sheet thickness by 10% added by 10% okay 
and you can draw the, uh, the in, in order to draw the material out of the die okay you have to overcome the friction that holds the material in place and also uh, the deformation energy that is being used so after it's gone after uh, after it's uh, fully gone through the <coughs> So finally, the shape of the blank is taken to the final shape of the of the blank itself here. Okay, and we have uh, as we saw uh, we saw earlier the air, this area previously uh, the flange was taken. As it goes further into the shape of the die, the, there there was some uh, thinning of the thickness here to follow the according to the clearance. Okay, so finally, so with this blank holder force and the punch going downwards the blank as you see uh, can go will be left underneath at the at the die at the machine some processes you can actually leave the 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 finished uh, finished drawing product uh, underneath the machine or you can also it can be uh, pushed out of the out of the die uh, in which I show in the later slides so in practice, when you do deep drawing, the blank holder, okay, pressure the which holds the the blank at its at its position, uh, must be around in the range of about 0.7 to 1 percent of the yield strength plus the ultimate tensile strength, and the clearance between the punch and the die is usually about 7 to 14 percent of the, uh, larger than the sheet thickness, and if you have a lower force, uh, lower force, it increases the drawability of the of the blank, and also to to easy assist uh, of the drawing out of the uh, after after the after the, the drawing, we can use lubricants such as mineral oils or heavy duty emulsions or uh, even soap solutions. So when deep drawing, uh, we define as the depth of the product is less when it's less than the diameter of its is is referred to as shell drawing, meaning that if you have a diameter, the the diameter of the the drawing is larger than the thickness, sorry, going wrong, thickness of the diameter, then uh, then we call this as shell drawing. For deep drawing, the diameter of the punch is smaller than the than the the depth. Okay, then th this is what we call it as deep drawing. And what are the main products that are made by this process? You can have beverage cans, pots or pans, kitchen sinks even, and also automobile panels. And here again showing an, an example. Of the deep drawing, okay. Shape method uh, through deep drawing, you can make uh, a cup shape, a cylindrical shape. You can have a box shape, or you can have other complex curved, uh, uh, hollow shape parts. Okay. So again, this is uh, further uh, showing the different terminology of the of the deep drawing process. B will be the velocity of the punch going towards uh, downwards motion into the blank. F H will be the uh, blank holders uh, force dp is the diameter of the punch rp which is in the diameter or the outer diameter of the punch uh, of the punch c is the clearance between the punch and the die db will be the maximum diameter of the blank and rd would be the sort of the inner diameter of the of the die and below this is the die itself and what are the important variables in deep drawing the other person are the properties of the sheet metal. What are the, its uh, ultimate tensile strength? Uh, what are the material properties of it? Here we have to consider. Second will be the blank diameter, D naught. And then third will be the punch diameter, which is DP. Fourth is the clearance between the punch and die. Fifth is the punch corner radius, RP. And sixth is the die corner radius, RD. Seventh is the blank holder force. And final lubrication to help assist with the with the deep drawing process. The formula for the maximum punch force can be approximated as uh, the maximum force is equal to pi d p, which is the diameter of the punch, and t is the thickness. 
times the u ultimate tensile strength with the ratio times the ratio of the um, diameter of the blank over diameter of the punch times 0.7 okay, then we get the maximum force if you look closely this okay is the area of the uh, of the blank okay uh, so if you move here you can see that you can have the stress that's being applied on the blank itself okay on the material the outer uh, the outer parameter and this is uh, the mutual property with the concern the factor of the maximum blank, blank diameter over the punch diameter okay so deep drawability is expressed as the LDR or the meeting drawing ratio okay or beta so LDR or beta is equal to the maximum blank diameter over the punch diameter which is the D not over DP and it defines as the the maximum uh, also in, in this case the minimum diameter that you can go uh, from the blank towards the, the the final diameter so for example if you have a, a 100 millimeter um, blank and you want to go to uh, 25 millimeter diameter cup you can't do this in one single drawing process I have to go through a step so this uh, the limiting drawing ratio of the beta defines the how much smaller you can go maximum maximum okay so the first draw the beta is about 0.5 so meaning that what's your original diameter you can only go half of the of the diameter from the maximum uh, blank diameter the second draw defines as the limiting diameter ratio the limiting drawing ratio as 0.3 which is for the 30% and the final third draw is about 0.2% so if we have for example the 100 uh, millimeter diameter of the blank okay so the beta is 0.5 okay is equals to 1 minus the diameter of the punch that you the final diameter over the blank diameter the initial diameter now so if if we have starting from the 100 millimeter so you have here a 0.5 equals to 1 minus the punch diameter the final diameter that you want over 100 millimeter okay so you have here 50 okay to the punch diameter so in this case if you're going if you're going to for example uh, if your blank is in the range of 50 to 100 so you can do in the first drawing first drawing process and if you want to go lower than that so you have to proceed with the second draw okay so this is the range that you can go with the first drawing process okay so in order to get 25 millimeter probably you have to go to the second or third draw drawing process okay this is what defines as the limiting drawing ratio and also another uh, property that relates with the drawability is the normal isotropy or plastic anisotropy which is defined as the r equals to the width strain with strain over the thickness strain okay e over width over e t and the r value is could we get it from the tensile test which we can get the also the average anisotropy is equal to at the at the uh, longitudinal r naught uh, plus the R at 45 degrees plus the uh, normal isotropy at 90 degrees divided by 4 
how do we get the normal or average anisotropy and average anisotropy so we uh, we can do using the tensile test okay using uh, uh, to get a normal uh, stress strain curve like this okay now we do we go, we we can uh, take out a piece of the we can either machine it okay from a, a piece of the rolling uh, sheet metal okay first we can do at the the direction of the rolling and then afterwards we do the we can do uh, we cut it at the 45 degrees angle here and finally we can do the at the 90 degrees angle of the tensile specimen okay and we uh, to understand the, the isotropy of the material we divide the the strain at the width over the strain at the thickness okay so you can imagine that the as the material as our uh, tensile specimen is being pulled okay so the width has become smaller on the inside and so also, and also the thickness is becoming thinner okay, so we divide it by by those value we get the normal isotropy and if we do a different cutting direction right, taking out this, this specimen then we can achieve the average anisotropy okay, using this formula and this is the typical range of uh, average normal anisotropy for very sheet metal which we have zinc alloy, hot roll steel, uh, cold roll rim steel, aluminum steel, aluminum alloys, copper brass, titanium alloys, uh, stainless steel and also high strength uh, alloy steel. So what is the relationship between the average normal ratio, uh, sorry, average normal anisotropy and the limiting drawing ratio? So you see here, as we have, uh, as we have, as material have a higher average strain ratio, you can see that is the, the LDR, the limiting drawing ratio, will be much higher. Okay, so um, meaning that if uh, because of the higher average strain ratio, so we have a higher uh, limited drawing ratio. Meaning that how much uh, it defines that how limited and uh, the material can undergo the uh, the deep drawing process. So with higher limiting drawing ratio, then you have to go with much uh, subsequent if you want to get a to a certain uh, diameter so you, if you have a, a certain uh, blank diameter and you want to create a, uh, a cup with a punch diameter so the titanium would have much uh, higher uh, drawing process subsequent drawing process okay as compared to steel so for example that uh, uh, for example for a steel maybe probably it, it needs up until four uh, drawing process yeah, for steel for drawing process only to get the desired uh, final dam uh, punch diameter so but for titanium you would take maybe uh, six or probably eight more uh, drawing process okay for titanium and if you have a much lower limiting drawing ratio then you don't have to go through that much okay so because you have a, a lower average strain ratio so still maybe at four just an example okay uh, it's not necessarily true but uh, for zinc maybe you only like uh, one or two the most or three okay and it's really much lower than the than the steel uh, material so uh, this is an example on how you calculate uh, the average anisotropy okay if you are be given provided with the r values of uh, at zero degrees the anisotropy value normal anisotropy value at zero degrees and then afterwards at 45 degrees okay and then uh, let's say at 90 degrees direction so what will be the average anisotropy for this material? So using the formula, R0 plus 2 R45 
times plus R90 over 4. So we have 0 0.9 plus 3.2, which is 1.6 times 2, and plus 1.75 uh, divided by 4. Then you have the average anisotropy at 1.46. Again, this value doesn't have any units because it's just actually the ratio between the uh, width, uh, the strain at width, uh, at the width over the strain at thickness. Okay, as you remember the the epsilon at W over epsilon at T. Since uh, strain, if you recall, strain, okay, is just delta L over L naught, and it is unitless. It doesn't have any unit. Next. Uh, next is uh, the relationship between uh, again uh, if you see here uh, so the if you have uh, as as we get the value at 1.46 here for example then you have the limiting drawing ratio at 2.5 okay, so then you can apply the same formula to the beta here is 2.5 okay so then you can understand how much uh, what will be the the how much you need to process that you to undergo to have to the, the final diameter okay and so in so we're going through through uh, some sort of a, uh, part of the end of the lecture so what are the common defects you can uh, that can occur in deep drawing okay, you could have wrinkling in the flange which occurs to uh, compressive buckling in the circumference direction meaning that the the blank force is not uh, it's not sufficient enough to prevent buckling. Okay, so it's uh, lower than the than the force that that is being punched to the blank. Okay, uh, wrinkling in the wall uh, can be take place when the flange is drawn into the cup, and if the or if the clearance is very large. Okay, uh, res uh, res uh, uh, resulting in a very large suspended area. Okay, meaning that uh, if you have the punch and the clearance. Okay, of the die area is too large. Okay, so you have the sort of the blank, sort of a not being supported with the with the wall of the die. Okay, next is tearing, which can occur because of high tensile stress that causes thinning and failure of the metal in the cut wall. Okay, tearing can also occur in drawing process if the die has a sharp corner radius. So that's why we have to uh, to avoid that. We can have rounded okay edges at the at the uh, punch earring occurs when the material is anisotropic meaning it has varying properties in different direction and this can occur in some um, metals that have uh, uh, the varying degree of alloying elements or some fillers in there so you can have some earring okay because changing in the the, the material itself uh, is a uh, it's uh, is has a different Direction has different uh, properties. And finally, surface scratches, which can be seen on drawn part if the punch and die are not smooth or if the lubrication of the process is poor, as I mentioned earlier. So you can use some uh, mineral oils or even some soap to uh, assist with the drawing process. Okay? And this is some of the, uh, the thought just now. Okay, we have the tearing of the flange. Okay, uh, we have tearing. We have earring, uh, and D is the earring, sorry, wrinkling in the wall. Here, this is wrinkling in the wall, tearing, and this is earring. And finally, we have the uh, scratch here because of the poor lubrication. So, what are the key factors in deep drawing? Again, uh, to recall back the properties of the sheet metal, what are the ultimate tensile strength, what are the, uh, and, uh, the average anisotropy. What are the limiting drawing ratio? Okay, the thickness of the sheet. Okay, also uh, plays an important role because then you have to consider the clearance between the die and the punch. Uh, the drawing ratio. Okay, the, as I mentioned uh, previously, the limiting drawing ratio, the LDR. Okay, the thickness affects the clearance. Okay, the clearance between the die and the punch itself. If you have a, uh, too much clearance, then you can have uh, tearing. The corner red die of the die and a punch, okay, that can result in uh, a defect. Okay, and the blank holder force, if it's too much or if it's too low, then you can have uh, flange tearing. 
friction lubrication can affect the scratch and also the speed of the punch if the speed is too uh, is uh, is faster then you can have uh, uneven uh, thickness okay from the uh, from the flange and also at the uh, the middle of the die okay, you can have the uh, affecting the thick affecting the thickness so this is an example uh, deep drawing of a beverage can okay which is this is the blank okay drawn from shape and then we withdraw okay this is the black itself we draw to a to this diameter and then we iron and dome it then afterwards we trim the ears and we clean the, the outer surface okay this is an example okay this is the first step of drawing when we go to the second step drawing okay to the final diameter and then to the cleaning after the cleaning okay this is a part of the an example of parts showing of the beverage can the flange area okay uh, the lid uh, and then this rivet with the with the tap okay we have the neck okay and the second opening for the for the to close the beverage can okay and this is the base shape of the base okay so this part actually is being drawn this here part is actually drawn while the top part the tab and the lid and also the base are being uh, is uh, uh, welded with the with the uh, base uh, with the the body of the can various can so that is all thank you very much for your attention for your uh, uh, giving time uh, having to spend time to listen to the lecture so uh, if you have any questions again you can uh, send it to the, our microsoft teams uh, comments or you can comment in the video and if you uh, enjoy the lecture and uh, give it a like subscribe to the channel okay, and i'll uh, discuss with you furthermore in our next lecture thank you very much